Okay, so ontology, uh, the term in philosophy refers to two different things. So first it refers to the type of things that have to exist in the world for a given representation or description to make sense, right? So if you take the, the map of the subway of Prague, in order for that representation to have meaning, to make sense, it must refer to a number of entities like lines having certain directions, being composed of certain stations in a given order, intersecting with other lines and, and so on. So the meaning of that representation uh, depends on the articulation of a given ontology of that domain, right? The second sense of ontology in philosophy is a method for producing that. Um, ontology, it, Computers are basically symbol manipulating machines, but in order for the symbols, so the symbols represent things out there in the world, right? Real people, real relationships, real events. So in order to make sense of the data for inside computer systems, uh, we need to expose, to review, and to articulate this ontology, again, in the first sense of the term. And in order to do that, we need to use ontology in the second uh, sense of the term, so as a method of analysis. And this is important not only to understand the semantics of data, the meaning of data, because this is also important for doing data integration or application integration. If you want to integrate different applications or different databases, we have to understand how data in this different database, what, what is represented there, what are the entities in the world represented there, so that we can find the connections between these entities. Yes, yeah, so, um, yes, indeed, the, the term ontology appeared in, uh, in data, let's say, in, in the area of database of what later became the area of database, actually uh, before it appeared in artificial intelligence. And ontology in the area of database refers to ontology in these two senses that I mentioned in philosophy, right? It's about articulating what is the theory of the real world that's embedded in data, and how to use this method in philosophy to articulate that theory. Ontology in artificial intelligence, in a sense, um, also refers to that, but because when you're doing artificial intelligence, uh, and especially in the 70s when you were doing artificial intelligence uh, using rule-based systems, what you wanted to do is to represent a theory of the micro, that micro world, that piece of the world, in a very explicit way using logics. So we had to produce a logical artifact that would allow a computer to reason about that part of the world, right? To do inference, to do deduction about that part of the world. So in database, ontology is more like a, a theory. In artificial intelligence, ontology is an artifact, a logical artifact, right? Co um, conceptual modeling, which related to database, it's about producing artifacts as well, which are conceptual models. But these conceptual models are representations of those theories. So they are again artifacts in a sense that become, in the best case, very similar to those artifacts that uh, people in artificial intelligence wanted to, uh, to, to produce in the beginning of this uh, expert systems in the end of the 70s. Yes, yeah, so I mean, ontologies will play a fundamental role in any domain in which, uh, so domains which are critical and domains which uh, you have, um, you have to do some complex word or a work in understanding the semantic of data and concepts, right? So um, in, in, in particular, so the, any, many domains in science, so nowadays, um, there is a, a very strong movement on the management of scientific data, which is called the FAIR movement. It's about findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable data. And one of the key things is the interoperable part, is the most difficult part. How, how do you integrate data which were produced by, by different people in different points in time, right? Um, which are essential for answering questions in science, but not only in science. So basically, all the interesting questions we need to have answered in science, in government, in organizations, can only be answered if we put together uh, pieces of data which now reside in autonomous silos, in separated databases. 
Um, and in order to solve this problem of integrating this database, we need, we need ontology. So basically in all uh, domains in which you have to integrate data or integrate applications and in which uh, the cost of failing to integrate this well are too high. Right, um, and I, I can mention some of uh, of the domains in which this is becoming um, ve very um, uh, almost a standard practice. One is finance, right? So if you do, if you have to do um, traceability of all financial transactions ag across different institutions, and you want to have a global view of this data, you have to solve this semantic interoperability problem, and there. Um, and there, the, 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 uh, the consequence of not getting this right are, are very serious. The other one is uh, in life science in particular, when you are doing, imagine if you're doing, for example, um, drug discovery. We take the case of, of COVID, for example, right? Uh, actually, I, ca I can mention two examples regarding COVID. So one is you are doing public policy and, po policy and you want to uh, do make decisions based on data, which again is, is, is producing a kind of distributed way, right? So imagine if you want to assess the effect of your lockdown policies by calculating the impact of that on, uh, on, on the number of deaths by COVID. And you are integrating this across regions. You have to guarantee that the meaning of this variable, death by COVID, in all these different regions is the same. However, suppose that different regions have a different meaning or different semantics for this, for this variable. Like for example, deaths by COVID can mean um, that you died because of COVID. You wouldn't have died otherwise. It can mean that you died with COVID, but maybe not because of COVID. It can mean that you died because of COVID without having COVID, like long, long COVID, right? Um, and it can mean that you, can, you died um, because of the COVID pandemics, because the hospitals are overloaded and you, had, you, know, you, you were denied uh, medical care, for example, right? If you assume that in this different database, this variable is referring to the same entity in the world and you integrate the data, you can, you can make very wrong conclusions, right? Um, so this is one example, but still on COVID, in order, for example, to do uh, drug repurposing, right? In the beginning, we, well, we, we had to come up with some proposals of uh, investigate drugs that perhaps would have some effect. In order to do that, we have to integrate uh, data about uh, genetics. We have to integrate data about different um, chemical uh, compounds. We have to integrate data about so the human genetics and the virus, the characteristics of the virus. We have to integrate uh, data about the different phases of the disease and the symptoms and how they would, how the symptoms are connected to the activation of particular uh, genes and so on, right? So not only we have to integrate data from all these different domains, but we really, really have to understand the subtleties of the semantics of these notions in these different domains to find a, uh, the correct connection between these notions. So basically, ontologies will play a, a fundamental role in all domains in which we need to integrate information and in which uh, the uh, integrate, integrated this information correctly would have, uh, we have important things at stake there, right? So doing the, making a mistake there would have uh, important consequence, negative consequence, but also that integrating this information requires uh, us to do some really conceptual clarification work on understanding the nature of these entities and of their relations. Yeah, so one of, one of the things we've been working on, it, which I think will, uh, will be a topic of collaboration with, with the group here, is trying to understand the relation between uh, some objects, some relationships in the world and how they connect how they are manifested in terms of certain events. So take, for example, um, um, a service, so a notion of service. What do we mean? What are we referring to when we are talking about service? We are talking about two different things at the same time. We are talking about a agreement, a service agreement, which is basically a bundle of uh, commitments and claims involving service uh, providers and service clients. But the service is also a process. It's a, a sequence of events which will satisfy the terms of the, that contract, right? Uh, 
which will honor what is agreed in that contract. So this is a problem that we see everywhere in, uh, in information systems, in social and legal domains, that we have this duality of a kind of relationship and a kind of process. Take a marriage, for example. A marriage is, again, on one hand, a bundle of mutual commitments and claims and powers and subjections and so on. Um, at the same time, a mar marriage is a process. It's a process of everything the spouses do as spouses to each other, right? It's a manifestation of the marriage contract. We believe that uh, properly modeling this duality of relationship and process will allow us to really model and manage and manage in a better way process in, in social and legal domains, right? Trying to uh, understand what kind of events constitute that particular process. So the, this is one example in which an ontology of uh, relationships and an ontology of process and events, understanding rela the relation between all these things can help us to uh, better manage data about, about processes.